Welcome to the VoiceOver Sermon with Terry Daniel, the podcast for voiceover artists with tons of handy tips, tricks, and useful information to help you run your voiceover business better. And now, here's your host, Terry Daniel. Everybody, Terry Daniel, voice actor and coach from Minneapolis. I hope you're doing well. It feels like an eternity since I did a podcast episode, and I'd like to spend the next 10 minutes whining about that. Man, what was I thinking? Why didn't I make it a priority? Why did I not do it? All right, that's enough. Uh, Hey, I want to talk today about three important reasons why you may have been turned down by a talent agent without telling you the reasons why. So this is an important podcast episode because talent agents aren't obligated by law to tell you why they may have turned you down. And before I get into these three reasons, I want to tell you up front that being rejected by a talent agent happens to all of us. Uh, It doesn't matter how much experience you have. I'm in my 30th year of doing this, and I still get turned down by talent agents. It's nothing to take personally. You just got to hope that the next talent agent will sign you. Um, And then keep in mind, I've talked about this on other podcasts. Remember, there's more than one way to get voiceover work. You can work as an independent contractor, working with production directors, corporations. And when I say corporations, most of them have in-house studios where they produce a lot of training materials for their employees that need voiceover work. Explainer, e-learning companies, you know, even business owners direct. Um, I don't want to sound like a broken record because I've already done two or three podcasts uh, episodes where I talked about this. But let's go into the three reasons um, that they may have turned you away again without really telling you why. Now, first off, before I do that, I mean, you have the right to ask them, um, hey, you know, I'm just curious. What was uh, what was the reason you didn't bring me in for an interview or what was the reason? that you didn't add me to the roster, and they're still not going to feel obligated to tell you because by law, they don't have to tell you why they didn't accept you. Now, some of them will go into the details, and some of them will just say, hey, you're just not, you know, we just don't feel like you're fit for our roster. So let's talk about some of those reasons. And the number one reason, it could be a really sloppy demo. Maybe somebody on Fiverr made it for you. Maybe a friend who owns a studio who's a terrific engineer, but not necessarily um, doesn't have the skill set to put together a demo. Maybe it's a demo mill demo. For those of you that have never heard the term demo mill, these are these huge, large training companies where they work with thousands and thousands of students every year. And every one of their demos sound Um, first of all, the audio can be very subpar. And second, everybody's reading from the same content. There's no individualism when it comes to demo production. You know, they, uh, it's basically, you know, 200 students picking from a bucket of like a bucket. I don't know if I've ever picked a script out of a bucket before, but (laughs) 200 students picking from about 20 different scripts, and that's not good. So you want to stay away from, I'm not here to sit here and bash my competition or start witch hunts or anything like that, but that's why it's so important to do as much research on coaching demo companies as possible and work with somebody who does it. Talked about that in other episodes. There's people that found a way to make some money doing coaching, and they just pretend they have all these expertise when they themselves haven't recorded one voiceover for one paid client. So that's uh, that's pretty frightening that those charlatans are out there. So always do your research when it comes to anything demo-related. Talent agents, and, and get, let's get a couple things straight here. They're not always looking for these big, giant you know, somewhat even overly produced L.A. type demos that have a lot of processing on it, where every single commercial sounds like an imaging spot or a TV promo. Uh, Talent agents around the country want to make sure you've got your acting chops up to speed. They want to make sure you've had some coaching so you know how to read a variety of different scripts. And they want to work with somebody who takes direction well from a client. This is often a skill that gets taken for granted. We're all in love with our voices, right? Voiceover, uh, voice actors love their voices. 50% of them aren't very good listeners. They don't take direction well. 
you know, you have to be able to take direction well. And that's what we work on uh, with our students uh, in the coaching process. But talent agents are looking for talents who not only have a really good demo, but talents that listen well, which leads me to number two on my list. You may have been turned away because you didn't follow the proper protocol on this particular talent agency website. They may have said, hey, attach the MP3 of your professional demo and fill out the form. Two simple pieces of instruction. I can't tell you, I talk to a lot of talent agents who have now become good friends of mine, and they complain about this all the time. People not following the directions on how the talent agent wants the demo submitted. This is not hard to do. You have to pay attention to the proper protocol, and usually that is listed on the website. I've heard too many stories where if a talent agent wants you to fill out the little form and attach the MP3, what do some talents do? They blow that off and they pick up the phone to call the agent. That is an example of not following proper protocol. Another example of not following proper protocol would be to blow off what the agent is saying on the website and send them an attached WAV file to an email. Now, I realize most demos, and they should be, especially commercial demos, about 60 seconds in length. It's okay if they go a little over. But if you're talking about a WAV file in stereo, I mean, you're already... 20 megs or above, I mean, that can create a lot of complications uh, via regular email, which is why they leave those kinds of specific instructions on the website. And they also don't like it when you submit demos to them if they're not accepting demos. Sometimes talent agents have had enough demos submitted to them in a certain five to six month period, and they may put a little message on their website, we're not accepting demos at this time, try us again you know, in about five or six months. Don't call them anyway. Don't email them anyway. Just, you know, respect the protocol. Three words, respect the protocol. And finally, the third reason, the third real reason they may not have added you to their roster because you pestered them too much. You called them. And then the following day, you sent an email. Oh, look, I found them on LinkedIn. I'm going to send them a private message. Hey, look, they have a Facebook business page. I'm going to send them a PM. Uh Uh-oh, it's been 24 hours since I heard anything. I better call the talent agent again. And uh, to make sure they really don't forget about me, I'm going to send my second and third follow-up emails in two days. I'm telling you right now, nobody wants to work with a pest. It's okay that you're resilient and it's good to follow up. You know, it shows that you're serious about this and you've got a lot of ambition. But there's a fine line between moderation and extreme. It's great that you're excited and you're willing to work hard and you're a go-getter. But that doesn't mean calling the talent agent every day after you submitted the demo, wondering if they had a chance to listen to it yet. And this, by the way... Uh, goes for auditions, too. If you send an audition to a talent agent whose roster you're already on and you get a little too overzealous, you start calling them and you start messaging them and emailing them, hey, have you heard anything? Here's some some breaking news for you. If you get the gig, guess who's going to be the first person they contact? You! The talent agent isn't going to forget your name. They're not going to forget how to get a hold of you. Um, it's just, these are such important tips in this day and age of voiceover. It's so important to follow the proper protocol, make sure your demo is rock solid and that you're not hiring somebody from Fiverr to do it. Or one of these demo mills that are out there. If they want you to fill out a form and attach an MP3 via some fun little form on their website, do it. Don't blow it off to send them an email or don't pick up the phone and call them. I got news for you. Talent agents hate phone calls. They don't mind them if you're already on the roster. More times than not, they're probably not even going to take your call because they want you to follow the protocol on the website. Now, uh, 
a quick point, there are some talent agency websites where there's zero protocol. It's like, okay, well, it's hard to know if they're even looking for talents. How do I send them my demo when there, there's nothing? There's nothing. There's no, there's no page on their website for new talents. So if, if that's the case, and only if that's the case, drop an email to the info at talentagencywhatever.com. I'm sure they have some basic office email listed somewhere on the website. Sometimes they even have the decision maker's name, which is great, the agent's name. So again, to reiterate, only do that if there's absolutely, you know, you've done all your research and you can't find anywhere on the website where it talks about how new talents submit their demos to agencies. All right, short and sweet. That's going to do it for today. My name's Terry Daniel, voice actor and coach. I have to leave you now because my wife was uh, wonderful enough to make me a raspberry smoothie and she just delivered it to me right in the middle of the podcast episode. No, um, and God, is it delicious. So I'm going to enjoy this summer afternoon refreshment. And if you'd like to get a hold of me, by the way, um, a couple things. You can email me, terry at universalvoicetalent.com. That's T-E-R-R-Y at universalvoicetalent.com. Maybe you're interested in coaching with me and my team. Um, All of us have well over 15 years of experience actually being voice actors. Uh, Very important when you're doing your research for a coaching company. Um, Or if you just have voiceover questions in general, you know, I'll be happy to to answer any questions that you may have. And then, um, yeah, if you want to subscribe to VoiceOver Sermons, it's really easy. You can find us on, look, I say us like I have a big production team, right? You can find us pretty much on any anywhere where you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, iHeartRadio, many different ways to subscribe to this wonderful program. Or you could just uh, take the shortcut and go to voiceoversermons.com. That will take you to the Spreaker page where you can just listen uh, right there. But, uh, hey, thank you for listening. I appreciate the time, and uh, I will talk to you later. My name is Terry Daniel, a voice actor and coach from Minneapolis. Take care, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to The VoiceOver Sermon with Terry Daniel. See you next time for more useful tips and tricks to help make your voiceover business run better.